Hi everyone and welcome back to Warno. Today I've got something a little bit different. I was approached by Attack Power Gaming, who's another YouTuber. He is a really big fan of SD2 and a former war game player. Please do check out his channel. I'll link it below and please do subscribe over there. He's a really nice guy and he has some great tutorials, which I'll be checking out for SD2 because I have been trying to play that a little bit more. Now he approached me because he's quite keen to get into Warno and he was wanting some help and advice on deck building and going over some of the units and things. So we've made a video together where he asked me questions, I explain the units in a bit more detail and perhaps it's even more detail than I would usually go into in my other deck building videos because I know a lot of you who come to watch my videos generally know more about the game to start with anyway. So thank you very much to him for coming along and approaching me and he's going to stick this up on his channel as well. And what I'm going to do is, because the recording I took is obviously all the voices, which is perfect, the recording of his screen obviously isn't quite as good a quality, so I will leave my screen up and I will click on the units as we talk about them, just so it looks a bit better. Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. I have a very exciting video today. I am here with Bandanner, who is another YouTuber here uh, who plays and casts a lot of Warno stuff. Say hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the video. Yeah, super excited. He's going to help me uh, build a Warno deck here today. Uh, try to get me off on the right foot as I dive into Warno. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this content, please make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to both our channels because he puts out some great stuff. So let's uh, dive right in here. So we're going to start with the logistics tab, of course. So Bandanner, I got three options here. Wh which one am I loving most? So it, it really depends on how you feel yourself and what you're planning to use them for. My advice is generally to go for the M35 supply. It's got a reasonable availability because you get six of them and it's got 800 supply. If you then got the M113 and have a look at that, you can see it's only got 500 supply. So you're getting a little bit less. Yes, you get more availability. They're a little bit slower. Obviously price isn't hugely different considering you're getting quite a bit less in terms of the supply. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and I know because again, this is different from Steel Division. In Steel Division, you can't resupply your troops and stuff. Are you bringing these in pretty aggressively? So again, it depends how you play. I personally tend to bring them quite often right up to the front line because I want them there to rearm everything and repair stuff pretty quickly. Because if your tank takes a bit of damage, you're going to want to pull them back from like the very front to just behind, so they're in a bit of cover and repair them and then get them back up to the front. All right, so am I taking one or two, do you think? I know at least one, but... I would I would honestly probably take both stacks. Take both? All right. Obviously, you've also got the Hemet there, which is a bit more expensive. It has a lot more in there, but the reason I tend not to go for it, other people will differ in their opinion, is you only get two of them, and I tend to have units spread across a whole map, especially if you're playing 1v1s or 2v2 yep, 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 yep. team games. And having just two available to you means that you're only covering very small areas for resupply. Well, and I'd be terrified of losing this thing. Like, because you only get and two that, if it That dies. is the other concern. Yeah, that is the other concern. Yeah, you're really screwed. Uh, CV-wise, I'm assuming I, I would go with the highest number, right? I mean, simply just vote. Again, yeah, it's it's about number. Obviously, this is a very weak vehicle. It's, it's a little Jeep, so it's going to get killed very easily, even from some artillery fire bombers etc you can go with the m577 little bit of armor but honestly it's not a lot if an infantry unit gets near it it's still dead well yeah i was gonna say i don't think the armor makes a huge it's only one top so artillery exactly. will still take this out after a couple hits so, so my advice is always go with the availability do we go with two that would be my question i would advise no because we're going to take commands in other parts of the deck okay I'm always afraid to use up infantry s slots on command because you need so much infantry. Well, that's one of the beauties of the 8th infantry deck is you get a huge amount of infantry anyway. So don't be afraid in a deck like this where we're going to fill all of these slots to take command infantry. Because th they are useful. They're good for hiding in buildings and things. Alright. So let's hop over to my favorite tab in 
the deck, of course, that infantry tab. So are the uh, when I played at the beginning, these military police were pretty OP, like just stupid good for their price. Are they still that? They are not as good as they once were. They they were nerfed. Their fire rate was significantly reduced. But a lot of people still bring them. They're still quite useful because of their range. They outrange a lot of the other infantry in terms of their anti-vehicle capability. So at the start of a game, you can be popping enemy infantry fighting vehicles before they would necessarily be popping yours. Oh, yeah, and they get up pretty quick. Uh, I guess not. This is as fast as... I oh, yeah, road speed, 108 kilometers. Yeah. So it's moving. It's, all, right, so, all right, let's take them. Let's let's give them a let's give them a go. I don't. I think double vet's already pretty good, right? Or should I double double vet is more than enough for these guys. You want numbers more than you want sort of increased that's veterancy. What I, that's what I figure. Now these guys aren't good, right? I mean these yeah. military police. Avoid those guys. They they're a five man squad with just a machine gun, and they're not worth it. Well, and, and infantry melt pretty fast in this game to start, so five men don't seem to last very long. No, you want to take as big a squad as possible for the most part. Yeah. All right, hopping down to these. So we have three kinds of engineers here, and I'm always, like, kicking around. Now, I know these. I know the Demolition Charge guys were recently nerfed, right? So, yeah, they've been changed slightly. So the, the Satchel Charges are still amazing, but from my playing with them in the latest patch, it's now not the case that they seem to throw while they're moving. They now have to be stationary to throw those Satchel yeah. Charges. They made it Which, static. Yeah. However they are still devastating. If they hit an infantry squad, the infantry squad is dead in one or two hits. Okay. My only concern is, like, so if I attack move these guys, they're going to stop way out of range of this satchel charge. Yep. So what I tend to do is actually disable their machine gun and their rifle and just accept that I'm using these guys as literally grenade throwers. Oh, wow. Okay. That's interesting. So I'm assuming, though, I would take them at one vet because I just want as many as possible to fill up yep. forests and towns. That is correct. And especially if I'm using them as a suicide squad, too. Yeah, and I mean, you don't you don't have to use them as a suicide squad. You could leave all the weapons on and just micro them straight into the enemy units and let them fire everything. I feel like they almost... I mean, it's not obviously not possible that they could throw something more than 175 meters to start. But, like, I find it frustrating because the lines of sight in the woods seem to be bigger in this game. So, like, they don't even get in range of the satchel charge most of the time unless you walk them into them. Yeah, no, they don't. You you really have to micro them and do it yourself. Yeah, that's, that's very frustrating to me. All right, well, let's throw... Now, uh, any difference here? Does it really matter? I mean, the uh, truck is way faster. It, for me, here, it's all about the truck because you can sell it afterwards. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. So the machine gun that the 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 transport adds is not worth the firepower. Not in my opinion. I mean, you know, some of these vehicles, if you've got a huge mass of them, they can be very annoying. But I think for the fact that you get the money back from the non-armed vehicles, it's it's worth it to get that money back and bring in another couple of squads of infantry. Okay. So engineers flash. Any good? Yes, very good. So these guys are great at obviously clearing buildings. They're good for clearing forests, you know, and they have that range where the satchel charges don't. Okay, well, I'll get those then too. The dragon feels like not the right place to get a long range AT because it's an engineer, right? Yeah, that, well, you know, my only advice is you would probably want the mech rifles. Yeah. But I can't remember if the mech rifles get a dragon in this deck, do they? They do yes, right they do. here. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so this, I would take the mech redundant. rifles. Yeah, it's because they're missing the machine, machine guns, basically. And is is the, the machine guns that big of a deal? Like, because in SD2, you know, like, having a machine gun's a big deal. Like, having that light machine gun is huge. Is it that huge in this game as well? So, the aim with this game, with the machine guns, is that they will stun lock the enemy infantry. That's the plan. So, the, they're basically more suppression. And... In more recent patches, that has started to work. So, yes, having multiple machine guns is helpful. Okay. All right. Because when I first started playing, it didn't feel like having a machine gun made a big difference. I was like, I didn't feel like units with machine guns outputted that much more damage. No. At the very start, they definitely didn't. And then there was this period where they accidentally buffed a lot of the machine guns, particularly the German machine guns, had, I think, 
a ridiculous, like double the fire rate of every other machine gun in the game. And they were just mowing everybody down to the point that people didn't want to play the game. Very nice. Always love it. Well, let's hop down here to our like meat and potatoes of this division, I guess. Oh, well, no, there's a lot more down here, but I think these yeah, are there's, the... a, there's a lot. But yeah, the mech rifles are your go to. Am I taking a mech rifle leader? Is there a better leader to take? Oh, the Jaeger Fear comes in with four, so I would assume him. Well, in my personal opinion, probably the four is better. The only time that I would make another decision when it comes to an infantry commander is if there's one available that has an anti-air weapon as well. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I don't think we have that, That isn't right? in this deck, no. No. So let's go. I'll just throw this Jaeger Fear in here so I have it. Take up that slot that I need and hop back up to the mech rifles here. So we have the mech rifles with the law, which does not seem very good to me. It's not great, but, you know, they, they are an 11-man squad. They still have the three machine guns, so they're not a bad unit, but they are going to be more up-close personal when it's taking out vehicles. Well, and they have three machine guns here, I just yes. see, saw. Wow, okay. And then we have the mech rifles with the dragon, which I feel like is just way better. Yeah, so obviously you're paying extra for the dragon, but it's got the range, it's got more damage. So they're really good for sticking in the edges of towns, in the edges of forests, and taking out incoming vehicles that are trying to storm that area. So would you say a mix of these, or just, just the dragon ones? or This is a completely personal choice for you. I, I quite like the dragon, so I would probably take two stacks of dragons, because I like having the ability to stick them in the edge of a town as i say and just do damage to incoming vehicles it also puts people off attacking you when they see a load of missiles coming towards them yeah so would you double vet these or you could leave them single vet i'd probably consider double vetting them however due to how fast they're all dying at the moment in the current patch i wouldn't bother double vetting them i just want more rather than less Okay, then there we go. Our nice 18 there. Uh, the fire teams seem a little underwhelmed. This one definitely feels underwhelming to me, especially at five men. This one's got a good AT rocket, but it's not super long range and it's a small squad. Yeah, so, you know, obviously if you're going to get up close and personal with enemy tanks, then it's really helpful, especially if you can get a side shot on a tank. It's going to destroy that tank. But, uh, yeah, this, this is a personal choice. It depends on how you micro your infantry. All right. Oh, I did forget. Should I be taking the uh for the mech uh the mech rifles? Oh, the mech rifles law don't the these don't have the dragon version here. Okay, I take yeah. it back then. I was gonna because I was gonna ask. Should I take this? Okay. Again, down. sorry. I think ahead. with I was gonna say with most of the support vehicles for bringing in infantry and things, it's kind of a personal choice on whether you feel you're going to use them. If you think you'll utilize it then it's worth bringing them in for that reason. If you were not going to use them and you're just going to have them sat somewhere, then you're better off bringing a truck and selling it. Okay. So is the Milan worth it? That's always a question I have. Are these... They seem strong. Well, this one doesn't seem that strong, but the better Milans and stuff. Well, the Milans certainly aren't bad, but what you want is the toe. Yeah, okay. Is it here? Do I have a toe? It should be in this. Oh, yep, down here. Yeah, there you go. Toe twos. So this is worth bringing in, I suppose? Yeah, very much so. You don't need to up-vet it. These things will vet themselves up after killing a tank. Oh, okay. Well, and they can forward deploy, right? Uh, yes, they can. No, oh, not they in this deck, sorry. Not in this deck. Oh, okay. So the 8th don't get any forward deployment. They're not an airborne. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, so arrow rifles, are these guys... What's going on with these? So, aero rifles, at the moment, they're very good because if the chopper gets blown out of the sky, they magically teleport Star Trek style to the ground. Yeah, I've noticed that, in your, noticed that in your streams. <laughs> I complain about it a lot, I know. Um, what is crap? So, this, this, is, this is how you want to use them. If you want to be a bit of a cheeser and, you know, rush them over the enemy point, let the enemy destroy them and your guys drop right next to their CV and pop it, then they're very well worth it, you know? That's disgusting. I will not do that. <laughs> I am not a cheese player. I'm, I'm insulted. I'm insulted you would imply I would do such a thing. Oh, God. No. Then forget them. What about these, uh, Heimatschutzen? So, uh, 
great little squad you get 12 of them obviously they're they're cannon fodder to some extent but you get so many of them and they have decent weaponry and they're an 11 man squad so i'd bring them because you can flood an area with those you know in particular a forested map where you need to just go in with lots of infantry i mean it just seems like a jaeger but with more of them right yeah basically the, the main difference is obviously technically the jaeger have a bit of training but i mean i've never oh. really had problems with troops running away put you know the cohesion drops but okay you don't have to convince me anymore cool and then what are these gunners oh it's a triple machine gun squad i suppose yeah yeah so these guys were added in the previous patch um that all the factions to some extent get some, some sort kind of, of gunner squad yeah. yeah obviously these are slightly better than the mech rifles the mech rifles obviously get the three 249s the the m60s are a bit better they do a bit more damage etc yeah you can see those yep. there um it's not a huge increase and to be honest with the way that infantry are melting at the moment i wouldn't stress about it too much all right and the only other option then is these rangers but they're a small squad they are again a small squad they can come in in a chopper so again these guys are sort of your if you want to be a bit cheesy i do not <laughs> so personally i would say gunners are good you could even take more mech rifles i think i will i think i'll just go another do another card of mech rifles here just to max out the mech rifliness because they i mean they are clearly the best infantry you got here yeah they're, all, they're all very around, good around. and all then right. oh, sorry, go, go back you have to fill that last slot you're not getting oh. in the way you have to fill it Oh, okay. All right. Then I guess... Uh, I'd consider I taking the Gunners or the Jaeger. Uh, let's go with the Gunners. They're only five points more. Same availability, and they're definitely better. Yeah. And we'll just no-vet them. So we have 85 infantry. Is that a lot? That feels like a lot. I promise you, if you play a full 40-minute game, you'll be struggling by the end of it. Okay, uh, I'm happy. Uh, in my Steel Division decks, I'm always like 80 plus infantry. Like I feel sick if I don't have that much. I've I found myself in in long games running out towards the end and having to bring in recon infantry to supplement my force. There we go. So this is that new uh, like toad thing. These seem really good for their price. So, uh, I, mortars aren't very good are a bit hit and miss they're, they're not they're great for smoking okay. so if you're going to use them to smoke for pushing to block the enemy firing at you whatever you want to use smoke for mortars are great but unfortunately other than causing a bit of cohesion loss they're not great at killing stuff I, and so you'd you suggest know, against them i'd say if you want something to smoke with take some mortars rather than artillery definitely but equally you could take mortars that have wheels or tracks but you get so f less so like i mean you could call so many of like call four of these in for 80 points basically and maybe have yep. a chance of doing a lick of damage yeah no that's very true so this 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 again comes down to a personal choice what you're planning to use them for and if you're going to use them uh, let's give it a try. Let's get, uh, I, we can take it out if I need points somewhere else. The truth is, the Toad stuff's really fun to watch them unload it and stuff, because they've gone through <laughs> a lot of effort on the animation. Oh, that's cool. Is the artillery worth it, the bigger stuff here? So, some of the artillery is reasonably good. If you've got a static infantry in a building that you're facing off against, then they're quite good at collapsing the buildings and potentially killing the infantry. They're not so good at hitting vehicles and things, because at the moment, artillery in the game always fires in a pattern of left to right, so it's yeah. quite easy to just move out of the way. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I have heard that. Well, let's... Uh, I guess I'll throw this big one in and we'll take it out if it's... if I want something else instead. No, I rocket... think, you know, they're, they're pretty good... If you can, if you're planning to hit a town, that they, they, they will do their job. Okay. The rockets seem bad when I've used. Yeah, them. they're not. They're not great. Again, they they move so slowly through the air. People just have time to get out of the way. Yeah. All right. Well, then off to our tank tab. 
Uh, here we go. Oh, good old Hetzer sort of thing. <laughs> These are bad, I know. Well, you say that. Well, they spam them. You can spam them and they, you know, they have armor. Yeah. They, they have armor. You can spam them. They're good at fire support. They're a little bit of harassment. And, you know, they are kinetic. So if you can get them up close and personal to enemy tanks, they're still going to penetrate them. Is that how that works? Yeah, yeah. So every, I think it's every 195 meters that you get closer to the enemy, your penetration goes up by one point. Oh, really? Okay. So this can actually be like a 20 point penetration at really close range. Yeah. So if you're like in their face, you can do a lot of damage. Oh, okay. Well, we'll put that on the back burner. See what we got here. Uh, how are these M60s? Are these more like just, I mean, any tank is a good tank really at the end of the day. But, I mean, for 80 points, 10 front and 15 damage doesn't seem bad. No, they're not bad. And I think um, it's very easy in, you know, coming from Wargame especially, looking at these stats, on paper they don't look great. But actually, for fire support for infantry, so firing at enemy infantry and light vehicles, they're very good. And also, you know, again, if you can get them up close and personal, they will do that additional damage. Oh, they have kinetic rounds as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let's take a card of these. Why not? I don't... I mean, adding another vet only takes two away, which I think is a pretty good trade-off, but they're already at the double vet. I think they're fine at the double vet. I mean, the thing that obviously has come over from Steel Division 2 is that if you have a command near them, they'll vet they up another level. Yep, yep. Do you find you do that a lot or not? On occasion, if I'm if I'm playing a deck that is tank heavy and I'm sort of in a defensive position in a point, I'll generally try and have a command tank just behind my front line that's, you know, buffing the tanks in the front. The reason for that in this game more than anything else is that for some bizarre reason, they've made it so that veterancy improves tank reload time and that includes auto loaders. Because some of the tanks in the game would have auto loaders that wouldn't really improve reload time <laughs> with veterancy yeah I, I understand having to kind of make it across the board sort of thing i guess that's we'll where the, that changes that's where i feel like that's where the realism bumps up against the game factor of it uh where they have that issue of well, they're trying to make it realistic but there's also game factors to consider yeah definitely uh these i mean i know they buffed these recently but I, they're still not worth it right no no they're way too expensive for what they are yeah uh super good support weapon right yeah really good support weapon so obviously ha explosives really high damage to infantry they they will do a lot of damage to a squad but obviously fairly weak so you you have to try and keep them at a reasonable distance well, let's see if we have room for them because i definitely want my m1 a my abrams as much as i can uh i mean it's a pretty significant upgrade i guess but it's a lot more points for the m1a one it is worth it. Okay. I would say double vet, it. right? Double vet, yeah. And I'd probably take two cards of those personally at least. Yeah. Maybe a card of M1s? Just regular M1s? Yeah, I'd probably vet those up as well though. Yeah. And then maybe the CEV? So again, this now comes down to how you plan to play your deck and what your play style is. If you're more of an aggressive player, then I'd suggest probably the CEVs because they're going to be good for pushing the edges of towns and things like that. Okay. Um, if you're more of a defensive player and you're going to be potentially losing tanks to, you know, cluster aircraft and things like that, then I'd take tanks, a proper tank, if you will, rather than the CEV. Okay, let's take the proper tank then. Let's go with another M1 so I can sprinkle them about more. Yeah. All right, that looks pretty solid. And then I would fill that last slot with a command tank oh you're a filler okay this is the one we got here i i don't know like this feels like why take it it's so weak this is yeah no take, take the m1 definitely you may get one more of the other one but i'd take the m1 because yeah. again this is the situation where i'd be calling that in for a frontline point preferably to also buff my other forces that are there gotcha all right over to the recon tab here we've got some fun i mean jaeger off are like a must take in every deck right yeah with, without a shadow of a doubt i mean they're an 11 man recon squad yeah why wouldn't you 
the Bradleys are really strong as well now, right? Because they buffed even the... the uh... Yeah, so in the latest patch, the uh, Bushmaster or all the auto cannons have had a, another little buff, but it's also got the Toe 2 and it's got optics. There is nothing bad about that vehicle. Do I take both cards? Again, that comes down to your personal preference. I have both in my deck. Yeah, I probably would. I, I do like these kind of units. And I think one more, what, the LRS maybe? Yeah, the LRS would be my personal choice. Some people would take the chopper, the keyword at the bottom. It's quite expensive. It does have hellfires. And some people would take the scout chopper as well. I tend to get choppers blown up a lot. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Let's go with this guy. <laughs> I do. I always want these to work, but then they don't. And then I die. Yeah, I, I, I don't babysit them enough. And then I suddenly hear the noise and they, they're already crashed. So... <laughs> <laughs> a little flaming ball on the ground. Yeah. To the AA tab here. Uh, the IHawks are the thing, right? So the IHawks are the new thing. They're the big daddy. They've got a ridiculous range. You know, they have the highest range against aircraft in the game. You will need to supply these things because so they only have a couple of missiles. But they're very good. Both? Uh, I would take both because you only get three. Okay. Uh, how about uh, how about good old Chappie? Chappie is really good as well. Absolutely no reason not to take a stack of those. Do I double vet this one, though? I wouldn't bother. If you no. look at how much it increases the accuracy by, it's like 7%. It's I'd rather have two extra. Okay. Are uh, Stingers worth it or not? So they've been nerfed in the latest patch. They were previously like 80% accuracy on uh, second vet, but... 50% still reasonably good. They're still pretty cheap. They fire reasonably fast. I like having a man pad in the deck because I like something to sit in a Bounce. building or something like that. However, we're getting lower on points, so now you've got to decide where you want to spend them. Uh, let's. I, I don't see me calling them in much, so let's leave that at go. We'll come back if there's points open. Uh, is the... Either is the... Either of these any good? So they are both good. Um, when it comes to attack choppers, again, are you going to bring them in? Are you going to babysit them? Are you going to use them? Obviously, ones with just rockets, very good against light vehicles, very good at stunning tanks, very good at killing infantry. If you're bringing in a tow cobra, obviously it has the advantage of also having a tow. So it can kill tanks more effectively. But whether you put helicopters in your deck is a completely personal choice, I think. I think a card of each will be perfectly reasonable for the option. Yeah. I, I don't think it's, you know, at all unreasonable to fill every single one point slot in your deck. Oh, yeah. I don't like leaving one point slots. It kind of, it kind of like bothers me <laughs> a yeah. lot. I, I know the feeling. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that's just wasteful not filling that up. And finally, the air tab here. Uh, I know the Thunderbolt just got a pretty hefty buff, right? To its so, gun. As as with all the auto cannons of oh, chain guns in this case, they've all had a bit of a buff. Yes, um, it's ATGM missile isn't the best in terms of its accuracy, but you know it takes a bit of punishment compared to most jets. So if you're wanting something with anti-tank, then it's not a bad way to go. Okay, and then we have the A-10 with the bombs. That doesn't seem... I feel like I'm calling this in to kill planes. I mean, uh, tanks for the most part, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's HE bombs, so it will kill infantry, but it's a very slow plane, and I think you're better off bringing a different bomber if you have a, one available, which you technically so, do. Is So is HE good, or is Napalm better? Like, what, what what's your preference? I wouldn't touch Napalm in this game currently. Oh, is it? It's not good at all. No, no, it's it's really not. From the testing I've done previously in the patches and stuff, we usually do sort of some patch testing after each one comes out. It just doesn't do enough damage. Interesting. It's, compared to War Game, where if you lay scenario with napalm, oh yeah, then it spreads and everything sets on fire. The forest burns down. It does a lot of damage. It damages vehicles and everything. In this, they just seem to drive through it without really caring. And, like, what about those mini-bomb ones? I know the, the Germans have a whole bunch of those. 
Oh, the MW1 is ridiculously good. Okay, that's what I, that's yeah. what it looked like. I feel like the HE bombs miss a lot, like, and they do no damage at all. So this 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 is a, an issue in the game that is not just HE bombs. It also comes into the problem with the artillery is that the explosion radius doesn't seem quite right. So if you get a direct hit with a bomb, it's going to do a lot of damage. If you're just outside of that blast area, then it's barely going to scratch you if do anything to you at all. Yeah, I I felt frustrated using them. What about clusters? Are those any good yet? Clusters are really good. So. The only issue here is it's only got two bombs. Oh, yeah. So your your strike is going to have to be very precise if you're bringing that in. Are seed worth it or not yet, really? Uh, seed are good. Um, the only issue with seed is you have to kind of be very careful with them and be careful on of your approach to the enemy. And obviously, if you're playing against more experienced players, they'll be turning their radar a, a, a on and off so a seed might not get a shot off but it then might get shot down all right well uh, this is what i'm thinking i'm thinking a, an, a thunderbolt because i do like having some anti-tank stuff yep. uh, direct uh, obviously we need some fighter here and that's this is basically the only option yes it is and it's not a bad choice no it doesn't seem to be it's got some long range you know yeah yeah i mean it's not stuff. an f15c but it's an you know it's as good as you're gonna get in most decks yeah and then i'm thinking an he bomber here because that's what we got yeah that is probably the best one you've got there it has 12 bombs it kind of bombs in a straight line usually assuming you know the bombs drop as they usually would so you can bomb down a road you can bomb along a town you know bring it in sideways to get the most out of it okay but yeah him and then i was thinking maybe just the cluster as well yeah, it, it's not going to do you any harm to bring in the cluster. Just bear in mind it only has the two bombs, so don't go after a large area. Go after one vehicle. Gotcha. All right, so we're all filled up here. Uh, feels feels pretty good. I, I like it. Lots of things go boom. Yeah, and, you know, this, this is the type of thing where, yes, I've talked through it and I've said what's good and bad. But you have to get a feel for your deck yourself. So it's the same when I do my deck build videos. My opinion is you can use all these things as a base, but you have to play with it and then adjust it to your play style. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Bandana, for doing this with me. This was very informative. Uh, I think this is one of the hardest things when you start a game like War Game or Warno or SD2 is... You know, even once you kind of figure out how to play the game, actually building the decks, you know, it takes a lot of experimentation. If no one's there to say, hey, this unit really isn't that good or this unit is much better, it can take a long time for you to realize, like, oh, maybe these engineered dragons just aren't very good, you know? Yeah, it's 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 a difficult thing. And the reality is, bless you, Jen, the unit cards aren't always giving you all the information. No, no, there's a whole... There's a lot of information behind the scenes. I made a whole video for SD2 about statistics you just don't ever see. There's no way to see yeah. them. Um, you know, and damage doesn't output the way it shows kind of thing. Like, with, you know, the calculation between rate of fire and, and aiming and reload. You know, there's all these behind the scenes statistics. You know, there's really no way for them to show that exactly kind of thing. But it, the numbers can be very deceiving at times yeah very much so and it, you know it comes down to like we were talking about the tanks there and the m60 and how you know on paper its stats aren't fantastic and the same with the cannon yang panzer they're not they don't have the best stats but actually if you can get them close to the enemy they'll do a lot of damage yeah and there's no way to know that like when i look at kinetic it doesn't say anything about getting closer doing more damage no. Like, no. I have no reason that I could ever figure that out without someone telling me that. Yeah, it's the only time you ever notice it is if you're in game and you target an enemy vehicle that you cannot pen. And as you get closer to it, it will then change to you can later pen it. I think that's also in SD2. Um, no. Well, so yeah, there's a drop off. The further you are, technically, your, your armor piercing value does go down. Yeah. Um, and, but it does actually say that it does mention in the like you know in the little notes yeah. they give you this number is at point blank range you know in that game 
Okay, yeah. But, that it, makes but sense. it is, it, but it's not clear either. You know, you see, oh, I have, you know, X number of penetration. I have 2,000 meters, uh, you know, I have 100 meters of penetration. That thing is 100 armor. Why isn't it penning? Well, because it's 1,500 meters away. So that's not actually your AP value at that point. And it's just like, I wish they would put here, like I'm looking at the kinetic thing. I wish they would put, I don't see, it doesn't say anywhere. Like I would at least wish no. they would at least say, we'll do higher penetration as it gets closer. Yeah, it would be very nice if it says that. Yeah, it doesn't even have to if say it just said it doesn't have to say exactly 190 meters. I mean, I think that would be nice, but I'm I'm not I'm not pushing for that even. I'm just saying at least mention <laughs> this will do more closer. And I mean, in fairness, I I just said about if you hover over a unit in game that you're going to attack, it'll tell you whether you can pen it or not. In fairness, sometimes that's even wrong. So one of the the other new division has been added. The you've got the 82nd for NATO and then you've got the 35th VDVs for the packed side and they have something called the Vasilic and that's should be a mortar but currently it fires like a grenade launcher so it's pinpoint accurate yes. if you hover over an enemy armored vehicle it will say impenetrable you cannot attack this actually if you fire at it force fire it it will fire on top of that vehicle and destroy it <laughs> so you know, technically, it can pen the top armor. Yes, it's always, it's always that technically. <laughs> technically, it can. But most people wouldn't know that. No, there's no way to know. So, yeah, so I appreciate you doing this with me. I'm looking forward to hopping into a game with this thing and seeing how I, how I do, how I take a whirl with it. No, not a problem at all. I'm glad I can be of help and it share some knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone, don't forget to hit that like button. Consider subscribing to both our channels. Thank you so much for watching. Do you have anything to add there, Bandanner? No, nope, not at all. I hope you all enjoy Warno if you're playing it. If not, it's going to be worth picking up definitely in the future. It's got a lot of good content coming. Oh, yeah, they're going to make this. This this will be a good game. At some point, this will be a great game. Is it yet? That's, that's for your own argument to make. But yeah, no... That's definitely a, an individual choice, and I always say that when people ask me. I can't sell you a game that is not finished. This is early access in its purest form. Yep, it's got it's got ways to go, but they they do listen to the community. They have, you know, people who care a lot about making this game great, and I think in the long run it will come together quite well. So thanks a bunch for watching, everyone. Uh, don't forget hit that like button, subscribe, and have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, everyone. Obviously, please, as always, like, share, subscribe. Please check out Attack Power Gaming. Like that video over there. Subscribe to him as well. Really nice guy. And it's really nice to do one of these videos where someone's asking me questions who's new because sometimes when I'm making a deck building video, I'm talking about units, how I would want the answers and how I would ask the questions. But sometimes when it's someone new who's asking those questions, it just hits the nail on the head for other people who are new and I'm answering the questions a bit better. So thank you to Attack Power Gaming for contacting me about that and hopefully we'll uh, be able to play some games in the future. Thanks for watching everyone. As always, have a great week and I'll see you all soon for some more Warner.